my I uploaded. I uploaded. If it turns the color blue, then it should be fine. Like, sorry, did it uh, change the color after after submitting? Like after uh, saving it? Yes. Yeah. If it changes the color, that means it's there. It should be fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I hope that um, you have submitted your exam. So is there any problem with anybody who could not submit the exam? Okay, so I'll start lecture nine now. Uh, we have uh, around 25 minutes time to finish this lecture. So I'll be a bit quick uh, because we'll be doing the tutorial problems today uh, based on the concept that I am discussing in this lecture. So in this lecture, I'll be talking about multivariate statistical techniques, which are applied in hydrology and in many other disciplines. At the beginning, I'll discuss the importance of this multivariate analysis. I'll introduce what is Simpson's paradox. Then commonly used multivariate techniques, particularly principal component analysis and cluster analysis. Now, why you want to do multivariate analysis? We know the bivariate analysis like uh, in today's exam, uh, I have gave you data of two stations and I asked you to develop a regression equation between two stations flow data. So this is a bivariate analysis. But you will see that the accuracy of your infilling of the gaps or the regression is not very high because there are other factors here that are affecting the flow data, not only I cannot predict the flow at one station by knowing the flow at another station because there are other factors like catchment characteristics which are different for different catchments. So that means it's a multivariate problem. One example of multivariate analysis is multiple linear regression. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but some people are saying that they can't hear you. But I, some people can, but some people can't. Probably it's a problem on their end, I think, because so I can. So some people cannot hear me? No, some people can't hear you. Okay, just give me a second. Maybe my sound is low or something. Let me see what's happening. So I think it's a problem on their end, actually. They can't even hear me as well, so. So can you hear me now? Yes, because I can I have hear. Given my sound, highest sound. Yes, we can, I think. Yeah, I can hear. We can all hear him. We can all hear you. That means that it will be on his end. OK, that's good. And you can see my screen as well, everybody, is that right? Uh, yes. yes sir. OK. So as I, as I was mentioning before that uh, multivariate analysis deals with more than two variables. Uh, like an example of is multiple linear regression technique, which I have discussed it before. So this is an example that why we need multiple uh, multivariate analysis is that uh, there is a study that where the 
salary of the graduates who are examined depending on the educational qualification. And when you lump all the data and all the employer types, then you see there is no correlationship. But when you split the data into uh, say educational sectors, uh, industrial sectors and other sectors, then it shows a strong correlation. For example, uh, changes in A can cause a change in B. For example, if rainfall changes, my, then my uh, steam flow will change. So in the second case, change in both A and B are caused by change in a third variable C. For example, the changes in rainfall and steam flow can both be affected by the temperature change. So there are many cases like this. In third cases, uh, changes in B are caused by changes in A and C. So this kind of things happen and we need to consider this kind of things in our analysis. Multivariate normal distribution is an extension of the univariate normal distribution. So in our univariate normal distribution, we have a mean and standard deviation or variance of the distribution. But in case of multivariate normal distribution, when we are dealing with number of variables, then we define that multivariate normal distribution by the mean and a covariance matrix, which really gives you the correlation between different pairs of variables. Multivariate normal distribution is widely used, for example, in our Austin rainfall runoff RFAP model, we applied this multivariate normal distribution to assess uncertainty. Now I'll be discussing principal component analysis. So principal component analysis is uh, used to summarize the data and to identify which of the variables are more important for a particular problem? It was invented by Pearson in 1901 and in 9-1933. So principal component analysis is uh, used in hydrology quite a lot because in hydrology, for example, the runoff is affected by many variables. For example, area of the casement, slope of the casement, shape of the casement, uh, vegetation in the casement, soil type in the casement, uh, steam density in the casement, and so on. So in this sort of case, when we have data for many casements, we try to see, we try to reduce the dimension of the problem by principal component analysis so that we can visualize the relationship better. So in principal component analysis, the data set, multivariate data set is rotated in such a way that it can generate some principal components which are uncorrelated with each other. And then we can use the principal components to explore the data easily. So for example, take the data matrix of n objects. Say I have 100 casements. And for each casement, I have p variables. So I have eight variables for each of the casement. So I have a 100 by 8 matrix. 
So these p variables, they are correlated with each other. So we can derive k principal components so that they are uncorrelated with each other. So it's something like when you have two variable, we can uh, um, we can plot the data into a plane on a piece of paper by using x and y axis. If we have three variables, then we can use x, y, and z axis to plot the data. But if you have more than three variables, then we need a multidimensional space, uh, which is not easy to see. So in principal component analysis, we use covariance. So covariance is estimated by this equation, that covariance C between I and Z for variable I and variable J. For example, it may be between area and rainfall intensity. Then one by N minus one, and then we find out the uh, each of the variable minus the mean of that variable time uh, another variable minus mean of that variable. So by that way, we can find out the covariance of using this equation. So when we drive the principal component, then the first component contains most of the variance or information in the data. Second component uh, accounts for the second highest variation in the data, and so on. So, IZ vectors they are used in driving the principal components. For example, let us consider uh, M is a matrix which is n by n. So V is an eigenvector of M if M times V equals lambda V. While lambda is called the eigenvalue associated with V. For any eigenvector V of M and a scalar A, this equation is satisfied that M times A V equals lambda A V. And the squares of all these Vs, square root of all of them become one. So this is a kind of mathematical interpretation and mathematical manipulation to derive the principal components, but really uh, you don't have to understand this equation that much because you will be using statistical software to do the principal component analysis that I'll show in your tutorial class that how we can use principal component analysis to do, do uh, like to use R or uh, SPSS to derive these principal components. So finally, uh, the analysis gives you a set of principal components where y1, y2, yk, where uh, x1 is a variable, say, our area, x2 our, say, catchment shape, x3 may be our evapotranspiration, and so on. And then there are sets of coefficients. So these coefficients are is the first eigenvector a1 on a12, a2 on a22 is second eigenvector, and so on. And as I mentioned before, all principal components are uncorrelated with one another. So this is a kind of first principal component, say uh, y1, and second principal component is y2. Script plot is important because the script plot tells you the importance of the principal components. So we can see that the first principal component uh, has a higher eigenvalue. It means that it contains the most information of the data. And second principal component contains second most important information of the data and so on. So 
So after computation of principal components, what we can do, we can make a plot of PC1 and PC2. For example, in this plot, that plot of PC1 in this axis and PC2 on that axis. And the catchments or the data members which are coming closer to each other, they may be similar, for example. So we can form from, for, we can form some rules or we can do some tree-based modeling here. And we can say that if PC1 is less than zero and PC2 is less than zero, then that's a group which is represented in this circle, in this quadrant here. Similarly, these four quadrants can be defined by knowing the PC1 and PC2, and we can divide the data into four groups based on this, or we can divide more than four groups depending on the structure of the data. We can also use this PC1, PC2, and PC3, so on, for regression analysis. This is called principal component regression. Some of our PhD students, they have used principal component regression. So is there any question on principal component analysis? Anybody has got any question on principal component analysis? So uh, just to make it clear for me, like as you say, the PC1, like in the factor one, explains, uh, I mean, the maximum variation of the explanatory variables, and the PC2 explains the uh, second most one. So does the PC2 include the earlier one explanation or not? No, it's uh, separate. Yeah. yeah. It's not cumulative, it's, uh, it's individual. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other question? This is highly relevant to Ali Ahmad's PhD study and also to some students if you want to apply this kind of technique. You can apply it very easy to apply. I'll show in tutorial class today that how easy to apply this kind of technique. So second on, I will now discuss cluster analysis. This is one of the most important multivariate technique which is widely used in many different disciplines of science and engineering. So these are used to identify groups in the data. When we have a very large data set, then we want to uh, group the data for many different reasons. Particularly in our hydrology, we want to divide our data into homogeneous regions, for example. Say I have 100 catchments and I want to find out, I want to group them into homogeneous or hydrologically similar groups. Then we can use cluster analysis. This puts a set of objects into a mutually exclusive and exhaustive group. So it means that a member can be part of only one group. It cannot be part of two groups. And each data point must belong to a group. So we cannot leave some data points out of the groups. So everybody has only one group, basically. So this is an example of the results of the cluster analysis. So you can see here, in the first case, I can cut at this point here. Let me take my pen. So our cluster analysis will give this kind of results. And really, uh, this vertical line is really tells the difference between the groups. So we can see the this is a group here. So this is a group here. 
And I have another group here. And the distance between these groups and that is the difference between the two groups. So, so really the data set can be cut here from two groups, or you can cut it here to form uh, one, two, three, four groups, but you can see that number eight, member eight is very different. And it has some similarity with seven and 12, but still you see there's a lot of difference vertically. So it means that uh, member eight is quite different than seven and 12. Maybe in terms, in terms of casement, it may be very slopey casement or it may be a lot of forested casement or something. And in this case, we can see that uh, really uh, we can cut it here. That will give me four groups. So this is one group, this is second group, third group and fourth group. If I cut it here, then I'll get two groups. So I can get, I can tell this is a super group one, super group two, and super group one has two groups, subgroup, this and that, and super group two may have two subgroups there. So this is a technique that is widely used in uh, regional flood frequency analysis for forming homogeneous regions. I have used this quite uh, widely in my PhD research, and also many of my students have used it in their thesis. So there are two types of cluster analysis. One is hierarchical, hierarchical, and another is the optimization. So hierarchical is really, um, an example of this is hierarchical is this, that you, um, put like one or two, a uh, like few numbers at the beginning and then you join and go up and up. And ultimately all your data uh, comes into a group. So this is my full population of the data. And then I am really um, uh, combining them into two groups by some way. So I'm trying to form some peers depending on some similarity issue, similarity matrix. So this hierarchical methods and optimization methods, there are two technique. I'll show you that in our tutorial class. Uh, most commonly applied cluster analysis is the hierarchical and algo narrative method, which is the dendrogram. Uh, this plot is called dendrogram, dendrogram. So dendrogram is this plot. So this is a hierarchical algorithmic cluster analysis. So how to combine the members together in a group? There are a number of ways of doing it. One is the uh, using arithmetic average. Another is the within groups linkage, nearest neighbors or single linkage. Wars method is quite widely used. Uh, in our hydrology, Wars method is, uh, gives some meaningful uh, groups in many cases. One of the problem with cluster analysis is that there are many different methods of cluster analysis. And if your data has not a proper structure in the data or not a proper grouping in the data, then you will get many different types of grouping from different methods. For example, if you use order method, you will get one type of grouping. If you use another method, you will get another type of grouping. And there may not be a lot of similarity between these groups. It means that it's sensitive to the method you are selecting. Which is the case when your data has no structure, but if your data has a structure, then most of the methods will give very similar groupings. So in cluster analysis, we use some resemblance coefficients to measure the distances. Uh, among them, squared Euclidean distance and the cosine coefficient are widely used. The squared Euclidean distance is 
something like this. If you have two points, if you have two points, and we know the coordinates x on and y on here, and say this is an x two, y two, then we can find the distance between these two points in this equation. Cosine coefficient really gives the angle. So if I have one of the tier, another of the tier, and if I have a, um, a axis system, and then the if I join these points, so this is the angle, cosine of this angle is the cosine coefficient. So in cluster analysis, we have to standardize the data because most of the data, uh, they have different units. For example, uh, for our hydrology, we measure the catchment area in square kilometer. We measure the rainfall in millimeter. We measure the slope in meter per kilometer, for example. So all of them have different types of units. So we have to standardize the data so that uh, it is, they are not affected by uh, units. So we know that there is a way of standardization of the data. This one is very, very important that we can uh, uh, drive the Z value by subtracting each value from its mean of the data series divided by the standard deviation of the data series. And this will give a mean of zero and a variance of one, this kind of standardization for any data set. So in summary, I have discussed the uh, multivariate analysis very briefly. And I have discussed the principal component analysis, which is used to reduce the dimension of the data and to identify the group structure in the data in a two-dimensional plane by plotting PC1 and PC2, for example. I've discussed cluster analysis, which is widely used in many disciplines of science and engineering. These are used to group the data. Suppose I am doing a survey and I have 200 samples and I want to see uh, whether I can group them in some way, then I can develop regression equation or prediction equation for each group separately. That can enhance the accuracy of the model. In comparison, if I consider all of the, uh, uh, like the participants into one group, Similarly, those who are doing thesis with me, if you are doing a uh, regression analysis, for example, if you, if you consider all of your catchments into one group and you develop the regression equation, then of course you will get some error. But if you group the data into homogeneous groups, you should reduce your overall error or you will be able to increase the enhance, increase the accuracy of your model prediction. So that can be done by cluster analysis. So any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, are you gonna take attendance for this one? Today I will not take attendance because today was exam day, so. Okay. Exam is a kind of attendance. Um, we do have tutorial. We have tutorial class, yes, at three okay. o'clock. Okay, sir. So in tutorial class, we'll discuss the these techniques today, principal component analysis and cluster analysis with real data and show how to do it. So any other question? Yes, sir. Uh, for the for the for the report, it is due next week, but I was just want to suggest some something. If we okay. could add if we could add self reflection just to show everyone input in the report. We have done this in Seps Water hydrology last year because yes like it's good to identify every one person from their point of view in the report so it's a group report is that right how many students in your group we are three so we are three yes. so uh, really i think i have not said to the student that you have to identify your contribution so uh, if uh, any group wants to do it, they can do it. But I'll assume that everybody has contributed more or less equally. Unless it is mentioned in the report that somebody has contributed more and less, 
and in that case, mark may vary among the group members. So I, I hope that you can resolve your differences among the groups and you should work together closely so that there is no dispute or problem in your groups. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. So is there any other question? Ali Ahmad, can you explain uh, what is cluster analysis and why you want to do it? Uh, yeah, cluster analysis is one kind of analysis by which we can uh, group a uh, uh, large number of catchments in a, a few number of clusters, like three or four. So when we do cluster analysis, uh, so in that case, we find some similar characteristics catchment in a single region. So within the region, the catchment uh, characteristics might be the similar, but between the uh, regions, the characteristics will not be the similar, it will be homogeneous. So cluster analysis, uh, we did in our regional cluster analysis to get the better estimates uh, from the uh, gas catchment to transfer this, uh, 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 estimates to the ungazed casements. So it is uh, one kind of important uh, analysis in regional flat frequency to delineate the casements in a homogeneous group. Okay, so divide the casements into a number of homogeneous groups. So yes. that is uh, quite important for in many analysis. Uh, uh, it can be done for other things, like for example, your you are testing many concrete cylinders for testing the strength of the concrete, and then you can group them uh, to really, uh, depending on the different characteristics and so on. So in many disciplines, you can apply this technique uh, to divide the data into sets of homogeneous reasons. Yes. So it is, it is quite important application. It is quite important application. Any other question? I'm sorry, so that means that when using the models, um, models created um, on catchments with no stream flow data, uh, those catchments also like they, they're they also have to be grouped in similar homogeneous regions like you can't just use a, use the model for example if a model so comes yeah, from... I think you are right you are right because when you have an unguessed catchment then you have to allocate that unguessed catchment to one of the groups yeah is that right yeah yes yeah. so you can do that by uh, computing the principal components for example because principal component is a function of the catchment characteristics, like area, slope, rainfall, and so on. So that means that you don't need your steam flow data to calculate your principal components. Right. Is that clear? Uh, yes. yes sir. Because uh, like say you have 100 guest catchments for your case, and uh, you can divide these catchments into number of groups using cluster analysis. And say you have three groups, and then you develop three sets of prediction equation for Q100. And then the, when an unguessed catchment has to be applied, then the issue will come. Uh, this unguessed catchment uh, goes to which group, which of the three groups. For that, you can uh, use principal component analysis to allocate it to a particular group. And this allocation of uh, grouping is a, is a complex one. And there are a lot of issues with this. And uh, you have raised a valid question, and it has it's a problem, and there are issues with it. But there are some techniques you can do it. You can use the Andrews curve. You can use principal component analysis. Uh, you can uh, do cluster analysis as well, uh, and you can see uh, who is catchment, who is who is. You can read your cluster analysis by adding your unguessed catchment to the full data set. But the problem is for many people. Uh, they don't know how to do cluster analysis, so that's why it's a problem. But nowadays with the computer skills and it's very simple to do it, uh, but then you have to develop your new prediction equation again problem. So there are issues with all these kind of things, but uh, if you know this, it's not difficult. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, so what about the project uh, work like in a group, as you mentioned earlier, group? we have. Uh, three members in our group. So is is the tax is delivered to the group or it will be delivered? I think for PhD students, I am not giving any project. 
uh, for undergraduate students, it's their assessment requirement for the uh, for their um, uh, like for their mark. But for your for the PhD students or most MPhil students, I am not giving any project work because uh, it, very similar things like what you have learned so far. The project group is really different flat frequency analysis and distribution, this kind of thing. Okay, thank you, sir. It's clear. Is there any other question? If not, then we can stop here and then we'll see you in the tutorial class at three o'clock. So how's the exam overall, Sanjim? I would say it was good, yep. There's a lot of time, so I took time. So the time was enough, is that right? Yeah. Amir. Hi. So uh, do you have any question on today's lecture? Uh, no, no, I think I'm cool. Yeah, I'm good. So these are the techniques that you can also apply in your thesis probably, but if you want to apply too many techniques, it's difficult, you know? Yeah, like it's just a time matter. Yeah, it's a time issue, that's right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then we can stop here. I think we have crossed the time. Really. So I'll stop it here. Thank you, sir. Thank you.